Hello people, I'm Phil and welcome back to our assembly code series. If you remember last time, we created a program where we learned how to include files and also how to create a print function. Uh, today we're going to learn how to um, create a read function to read from standard input. And before we do that though, uh, if you see up above, we have the unistandard64 include file. That looks like this, and it's essentially a mapping of names to numbers. So in the Unix or Linux operating system, uh, 0 corresponds to the system read, 1 corresponds to system write, uh, system open is 2, and so forth. And what this mapping allows us to do is not have to remember what all those numbers mean. So down here at the bottom of our program, we have this number 60, which is the six system exit uh, system call. What we can do instead is uh, replace that with our system exit label. Uh, and that is very um, convenient. It's not necessary, but it's convenient. So what we'll do up here is include this file. And that will allow us to now refer to these system calls by their name instead of having to remember their number. And let's go ahead and make some changes to our io.include file because down here at the bottom, we have a system write call and let's insert system write and now we don't have to worry about remembering that anymore all right now let's get down to business on writing a function to read from standard input and this is actually even easier than our print function what we want to do is we want to move RDI into RDX. Then we'll move zero into RDI. Um, this is the uh, standard in flag. Then we perform a system call and then we return. And so actually at the, this is actually the buffer to read to. So, and that is our read function. Now let's go and try it out in our phasm. Actually, what we'll do is we're going to copy our phasm2 Copy our phasm2 code to phasm3. So now we have our new phasm3. And actually, for simplicity's sake, I'll just remove this. So we'll have our phasm3 code here. Vim phasm3. Now what we'll do is let's go and uh, let's actually create a little um, some new bytes. Let's create a prompt, uh, a user prompt, where we'll declare some bytes and we'll say, please type your name. End it with zero. And then we'll also need to create a buffer if we're going to read the person's name that's typed in. What RB means is reserve bytes. And the way that it differs from declaring bytes is that it allows you to grab uh, bytes from the memory without having to initialize a value. So I can just say, give me 64 bytes. Um, I'm not going to give you a value. I'm going to give them later. And that's pretty useful. So what we'll do is we'll go up here and we will, let's see. We don't need any of this. So what we'll do here is we'll load the effective address, RDI, into uh, 
uh, or prompt into the RDI. So we'll give the address of prompt into RDI. Then we'll call the print function. So that will print our prompt. Then after we're done printing, we'll want to load the effective address into RSA, RSI of our buffer. Then what we'll do is move um, 64 into our RDI. This is the uh, size of the buffer. Then we will call the read function. Then we'll move, let's see, RSI into RDI. So this will be, um, uh, so move, we want to move uh, the string the red to RDI. And then we can call print because print will take RDI and print out what, whatever string is in RDI. And that is it. That should be it. All right, let's try it out. Let's do phasm phasm3. And we now have a phasm3 executable. It says, please type your name, say fill. Oh no, looks like we exited too early. So let's go phasm3.asm. Let's see, what did I do? Oh, did I get my read function correct? Let's take a look. Let's see. We did an RDX to RDI, RDI is zero. And then we did a system. Oh, you know what? We need to, I never gave it. I never gave our system call a command. So let's, let's say, let's do racks with system read. And then we can call our system call that will read in for us. So now we should be able to do phasm and then phasm3. Please type your name, say fill, and it prints out our name. So we read from standard input and printed to standard output. Pretty neat. We can run it one more time. What's your name? John, and it prints out John. That's pretty neat. So that is how we read from standard input and print to standard output. Thanks for watching. Till next time, guys.